we don't even fully know yet the full impacts of this fire on habitat. Welcome to This Week in Ecology, where I talk about breaking news in wildlife, environmental science, and ecology fields, and break down and fact check what we're getting from the media. So as it stands right now, it is January 4th, 23 people have been killed in these fires and six people still remain missing across Australia. There has estimated to be 480 million animals killed. I will fact check that claim in a minute. While gathering data for this video, I checked where the fire actually is on the fire maps to see what states I could report on. They're in all of them. The entire country right now is burning. The scale of these fires is absolutely incredible and hard to even fathom. What even is 3 million hectares? That is a huge amount of land that is absolutely burning right now. I mean, these fires have been going on since September, but as we speak Saturday, the day I'm filming this is predicted to be a very catastrophic day in terms of weather conditions to make these fires even worse. So why are fires this year so bad? So you might see claims from people saying, Australia always burns. I know this looks bad, but this is a natural process. So scientists are fighting back on that claim a little bit. A lot of these landscapes actually do require fire in order for the biodiversity to flourish in that area. Historically, fire was not this bad. There's some arguments of whether or not this is truly unprecedented or simply very rare of a fire season. No matter what though, you can say that these fires are catastrophic. So temperatures have been over 40 degrees Celsius for a long time now, and they are predicted to remain over 40 degrees Celsius. This dry, hot weather is fueling the fires. And on top of that, strong winds are causing it to spread rapidly through habitats. Rainfall in November has been the lowest on record and a drought that began in 2017 is still continuing based on information from the Bureau of Meteorology. So let's talk about um, the animal estimates. So I've been seeing widely on social media, Twitter, news organizations, headlines, all saying 480 million animals are killed in these wildfires. Let's look at that number because as I've learned from the koala estimates that came out that ended up being incorrect, I'm trying to fact check everything I hear before I share it to you guys. Australian biodiversity professor Chris Dickman has used 2007 data from a World Wildlife Fund for Nature study that estimated the impact of land clearing on animals. So they were able to estimate that within one hectare, there was 17.5 mammals, 20.7 birds, and 129.5 reptiles. With our estimate that 3 million hectares have burned, which is arguably now a little bit outdated, they have come up with the fact that 480 million animals could potentially be impacted by these fires. As you guys know, science communication could be like a form of telephone where one scientist says one number and then it gets changed and changed and changed to something like a little bit more extreme. It appears that this 480 million number is animals that could potentially be impacted by fires. However, the news or headlines are reporting that 480 million animals are dead due to fires. So we don't know, of course, as I'm sure most people believe, we don't know that 480 million animals have died. So the presumption that every single animal present within that hectare has died could be overstating the facts a bit. And that's what ecologist Colin Beale from the University of York is reporting, that, that these numbers are overstated. Before I agree with that, I think you also have to look at the fact that we don't have an accurate number on exactly how many animals are within every single hectare. So we have to use the best data that we can in order to extrapolate out and make assumptions about this area. Density estimates are not available for every single species. So this was the best data source that we had. However, I think it's more accurate to say 480 million animals may be impacted rather than saying 480 million animals have been killed because we don't know that. And use of words like that may seem like a little nitpicky, but I think is really important for the scientific integrity of claims.
However, as a wildlife biologist, we know that it's not just about the individual species loss, it's about habitat loss too. We don't even fully know yet the full impacts of this fire on habitat. We still need to do more studies on the area and we need to wait till the fires burn out in order to accurately assess how much habitat has been lost. It's not looking good so far. Researcher Pat Hodgins set up camera traps to try to study the rare endemic dunnert on Kangaroo Island. So he set up all these camera traps, the fire went right through his area, and his camera traps burned and many of his study species have perished. That's just a small glimpse of what is happening across Australia for many endangered species and their habitats. Some endangered species who have lost a huge percentage of their range are the Hastings River Mouse, the Rufus Scrub Bird, the Brush-tailed Rock Wallaby, Dunnerts, and as fires are moving in even further, the Mountain Pygmy Possum is threatened. Well, if there's normally fire in these areas, then why can't they adapt and can't they recover from a fire like this? Normal circumstances, there are patches of habitat left for these species to survive. Some of the data coming out is showing that the height of the flames is higher than the Sydney Opera House. So that is just such a catastrophic level of burn that species aren't going to recover in the same way that they have in the past. So birds will lose their breeding trees, especially those that rely on the older growth trees. And birds also lose their source of food, whether that's invertebrates or fruit, because it's being burned across the landscape. The ground dwelling mammals are particularly vulnerable to fire, but even if they do survive, they are going to come out of their burrows and see just a barren landscape with predators looking for little prey species. So they're extremely vulnerable to predation at higher levels than they would normally. The ecological services that these species provide is also threatened. So for example, bandicoots move fungal spores around the landscape post burn, but if we lose a huge portion of our bandicoots, the area isn't going to rebound like it naturally would. Species rebound after the fire also depends on how flexible they are for their habitats. If they need old growth forest and there is no old growth forest left, they're going to have a much harder time surviving versus some species that are able to adapt to fire landscapes. The short answer is it's going to take time to fully quantify the impact that this fire has on the endangered species in Australia. Some of the organizations that I would recommend donating to right now is the Koala Hospital, who is rehabilitating many of the injured koalas, the RSPCA, who is working on saving some of the pets, livestock, and wildlife in the burned areas, and the Australian Red Cross, who is providing support to people displaced and survivors of these fires. I don't get much in ad revenue from these videos, but I will be donating ad revenue from this video to the RSPCA. Another thing you can do is to reduce your carbon footprint. So this drought, these temperatures and these wind conditions that are causing catastrophic wildfires are attributed to the impacts of climate change in general. So any methods you take to reduce your carbon footprint, whether that's going vegan, whether that's reducing your dependence on fossil fuels is going to help prevent fires like this in the future. Vote for leaders with ambitious climate action plans and people who don't line their pockets with fossil fuel money. Also vote for initiatives in your area that promote restoration of wildlife habitat. Spread the word of what we can do to help the animals and the people impacted by these fires. As usual, thank you guys for watching and I will see you on the next video.